Welcome to part six. So oh, we had a bit of a setback um, last time. Uh, we were putting up the belt and like rebuilding the entire entry, but it didn't work as expected. So today we are here to fix that. Um, we didn't stream last week because I, I was unfortunately a bit sick, um, but I'm recovered. So let's try to catch up a bit. Um, let's see. So the sales basically is as we left it off, I didn't change anything on the machine itself. Machine, cutting air quotes. Um, but I ordered a couple more parts, like parts I ordered to arrive. Um, so let's just go through the new stuff we have. So firstly, uh, or what, what is it? Maybe before we look at the parts. Um, what I did between the streams basically was I redesigned the parts that were like, kind of all parts. But basically everything that had to do with the uh, belts and how the belts are run. Uh, so basically before, I'm not sure if it's a bit hard to see, but we used those like 3D printed bearings here. And maybe, maybe here it's actually easier to see. We used those 3D printed bearings, uh, which didn't run well, like caused a lot of friction as soon as the belt was under tension. Um, stupid idea in retrospect to do that or attempt that um, in the first place. Um, so basically that won't work. Uh, it's kind of like the second time now I hit a snack where I tried to um, hit like this like super cheap price point as uh, I set myself, but I'm basically failed uh, in uh, coming up with like a super low cost alternative. Uh, so I guess uh, like my idea now is kind of like to turn the thing a bit around. Like I'm not fully giving up on the super cheap price point, um, but I first want to have like a properly working machine, uh, and then we can like try to replace parts with like cheaper alternatives. Um, that means we already swapped in like normal linear bearings um, and I kind of like gave up on the 3D printed ones for now. I, I do understand by now, by the way, why they don't work, which is good. <laughs> so there's progress. Um, and then the other thing is all basically like we're also swapping out the three printed stacks. Either what type of filament did you print the bearings in? Um, I used ABS. I also tried PLA. Um, I think it, yeah, it's just there's too much friction. Like as soon as the belt, goes around the um let's assume this is like the, the roller stack here right as soon as the belt goes around the, the roller and you put tension on the belt uh it just really presses the roller into the rod and like there's too much friction um if there the belt wasn't tensioned it worked well uh just like in the moment you tension the belt yeah doesn't doesn't really work um so basically now i redesigned all the parts uh in a way that we use normal bearing stacks so that's kind of like what you are used from your 3d printers right um these bearing stacks I actually copied them basically one-to-one -one from the uh v0 project um these are the same part and yeah that should solve the problem so at this point we are not doing anything fancy custom anymore so basically we're using standard parts more or less um i mean the the, the rod and linear uh, linear bearings is a bit out of date, I would say, but it's not like super special, like this should work. Um, so today, basically, we kind of start over. Um, these parts are very, very, very similar to the parts we already have. The only difference is they're not using the three printed stacks, they're using the normal stacks. So we have our uh, M3 uh, shims, which are 0 0.5 millimeters. And then I actually splurged a bit. <laughs> And I got like the, the the good bearings. So these are like the Fushi, Fushi bearings. Fushi, Fushi, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But these are like a bit higher quality ones. Um, yeah, what well, like in total, I think three, four euros more. Um, won't make any difference, but now we have nice bearings. So these are like the one things I want to change or the one point I want to change. Um, the other part is we will go with the standard NEMA 17 motors. Um, so initially we wanted to use those like uh, 28 BYJ 48 motors, like those like, do I have one? Yeah, these, these ones, I uh, just like to hit this like 100 euro price point to set myself. Um, but again, like I, I, it's doable. Um, I think we can get this to work. Um, but for now, let's just stick with what we know works properly, which is the NEMA 17. I have one spare one here, 
Um, and then we kind of take apart this uh, extruder from my switch wire and steal <laughs> a second one. Uh, it's a bit different uh, like size, but should be fine for testing. Um, and then basically like upcoming project, not sure if we do it next week or the week after, uh, we actually convert my switch wire from um, Bowden extruder to um, direct drive. Um, that will free up two uh, NEMA 17 motors. And these are the two motors that we will use in this build here. So yeah, um, the motors and the last one, actually, um, I ordered more uh, linear bearings. Uh, it was kind of like accidental, more or less, because the only reason I ordered more is because I didn't have enough for the bed. For the bed, we also will need to use linear bearings. And these are way, way, way better. Like, these are like the same no-name linear bearings I ordered before, but they're way better. Um, like, they're like super smooth, they, they like, don't have like any any weird vibrations or like noise so yeah let's go for them um i cleaned them out with uh, isopropyl alcohol i packed them with uh, grease and i actually marked two very faintly with y so these are the two we want to use on the y axis the x axis we can easily swap out later on the y is a bit of a pain uh, to later swap the bearings so I, I chose the best bearings for the y axis um yeah that's basically it uh i think we can just get going right so basically my plan is um first to assemble all the pieces and then like put it together so basically we have everything printed here um I kind of want to recycle the heated inserts. So I think like, because these parts are kind of useless now for me. So I think we just take the part, take out the heated inserts and put the heated inserts in the new parts. So just like we work our way through. Um, I already assembled one front idler just to test everything. Oh yeah, by the way, I also have new screws. Um, I ordered more screws and I accidentally ordered black screws. Um, so now we use black screws. Um, at least it's much easier to connect the motors to the board now. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Although, like, by, by now, like, we figured out how the other motors work, right? Like, that's solved in a certain sense. So I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, but I actually also have a plan for those cheap motors. Uh, like, I have a use case for them. So I'm not sure if we'll do it on stream. Uh, but I will do like a printer uh, simulator. Uh, just like a very small box that acts like a 3D printer um, that I can just put on my desk when I work on uh, printer software. Then you don't have to work with a full printer all the time. Uh, it's also like, quite wasteful that uh, you have to like heat your bath all the time just to work on software um, and stuff like that. So that's kind of like for later, a uh, future project. So um, these clamps, I will just like leave intact. Um, we will need them later, I think. Not today, but at some point. Like these are just like T clamps, right? Like we can use them for anything on this printer. So it will be quite handy um, to have. Uh, where do I put the rods? Let's just put the rods here. Okay, nothing also. All the new parts go over here. And then I guess. We have one front idler already, right? So this is this side. So let's just take this one apart and build a new one. Will be a bit of meditative work. <laughs> Not sure if it's super interesting, but that is what we have to do. Oh yeah, like maybe those, like I can talk about those. Uh, so I learned a bit about um, these uh, plastic bearings um they have a bit different behavior than the normal ball bearings um, and basically the different comes when you um, apply force at like uh, with a lever basically so if you push them directly on the rod like directly here it's very easy uh, but if you have a force acting for example in the center um you kind of like push them a little bit in this direction right and that causes those ones to seize up much easier um, than the normal ball bearings. And I think this is the problem we saw when we tried to use those. Um, that just like the force was not like even across the x-axis and that caused them to seize up. 
Um, it's also like they're very, very sensitive to pressure. Um, so basically, the more pressure you put on them, or like there's a there's the perfect amount of pressure you have to put on them um, in order for them to work properly. If you don't put enough pressure on them, they're too loose. Um, and if you put too much pressure on them, they're again seizing up. There's like a very delicate sweet spot in the middle. How much pressure they, they, they need to properly work. Um, I think it's just like we didn't spend enough time tuning it out. But for now, I, I will skip those. Um, I want to keep it simple and just like go with what we know works. Hi, Alex. What's the use case for the plastic barriers then? Uh, the plastic barriers are gone. They are out. No more. I mean, at some point, um, if I want to like pursue again like the 100 euro price point, we have to find a solution. Uh, but for now, like standard part. Let's just uh, go with what we know works, is proven. And basically, I just like uh, inverse the order. So we go instead of from cheap to expensive, we go from expensive to cheap. Uh, I mean, in general, why do they exist? Oh, sorry. You, you mean those? Yeah, I mean, they have a use case, right? And they are way quieter than the, the metal ones. Um, but they are not a one-to-one -one replacement. That's not the understanding I built. They work a bit differently. Oh. Okay, let me also make sure to crash the old parts right away. If I don't need them anymore. Otherwise, I mix them up. So basically, like the plastic bearings, they are um, more silent. And they have a bit different characteristics. So basically, um, the the linear ball bearings, if they die, they immediately die. Like like they're just like seizing up or something. Uh, and these just wear off over time. Like they get looser, um, but they don't fail catastrophically in one moment. Basically. Um, but for me, basically, primarily it would be the noise that they're more silent. Um, but then basically because they just work differently or like they're more tricky to use i would just skip them for now i'm just a bit confused because like many people use them on i don't know, like the prusa mark three like on the y-axis for example and there seemingly it works um i think it also it has to do a lot of uh, it has to do a lot with how you mount them because what i also got to work actually like i was flying around a bit um, and I basically had like the linear, like this one in one side and on the other side, um, I removed the black part here and just had a zip tie holding it in place. So basically one part was really loose and could adjust and the other part was rigid. Um, and then these also work because you, um, if you push on the rigid side, basically the loose side can just adjust like the, the X will go a little bit like off. Uh, set like off square basically um, but the bearing can just like adjust uh, but it's also like not quite what you want in a, in, a, in a printer I guess so yeah I don't know I have to look a bit more into that um, but there's a lot to learn I have to like check a bit how that works um, yeah so basically we have the outer part the inner part and we have this part, and this part has lots of heated inserts. Let's see, this goes here. I think there are some under this, this cap, but we glued it in place, so I'm not sure if we can get this off. No, we can't. So yeah, this will be like a bit of fun work now to put a, all the heated inserts in again. Let me actually put up the, the heat a bit. It's just a bit easier and we just have to pay attention to not push them too far. That's this part. And I guess uh, 
Oh yeah. Okay, yes, it's here. So the last one. And basically this part I changed a bit. Uh, we now have like one extra beam in the middle that connects left and right. Um, to make it a bit more stable. So, and then let's also start with that already. Let's actually use a silver one for that. Let me see. So the bearing sack basically is just like put in here in, in, in the middle. Like it just lays in here the screw. And then like the other part just uh, goes on top for the other two parts in this case. Uh, and then like this is just like in here and the screw is kind of like trapped. <laughs> That's just like, yeah. Hold in place but nothing more than, like it's quite loose but it shouldn't matter. Okay, make sure to not Make a mess with those shims. Oh yeah, we also uh, need to take apart uh, this one quickly and change the bearing stack because I use different washers there. Okay. And then it's just... I might have forgot to print some parts or like one part in particular um, there's a spacer part so basically these are always like one shim and then we have like two bearings and then we have one shim on top uh, this is basically one stack but then basically we need like a spacer on top and I think I forgot to print those spacers um, which is not ideal. But luckily that's a very quick print. So we should be able to, to fix that very, very quickly. Huh. No, I forgot to import that or to export it. Let's see, so if we just go to the front dialer here. It's the same part everywhere, so I think we need... And it's just this little, little piece here. Yeah, and I forgot to export that. Let's just quickly save that in Orca. And how many do we need? We need uh, one, two, three, four, five, no, one, three, four, eight. We need eight of those. That should be like a 10 minute thing, five minutes. Most time will be needed to preheat the printer. That's a pity, but that's how it is. Cool, um, then let's quickly pause on this part and just continue with something else. And then we, we return and continue when the bearing sex already. Um, I guess let's just continue with um, these uh, XY joints. So we need three parts for this one. Yeah, it's those three. And there's a mirror part on the other side. 
has these three parts. Let's see, so we have one, two, three, four inserts here, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> That's fine. Um, let's do the same trick again. Let's just take apart one part and just transfer the heats and inserts over. I will take apart this one later. Okay. These are the old parts. Oh. Too many people around on a Thursday evening, seemingly. See, so yeah, these are like the I don't know, they, they also look cheaper. That's not not a good quality of bearing. Let's take one of the ones I, I labeled with Y. And then I always made four marks on the side, and basically. Uh, when we put in the bearing, we need to look at two of those marks at 45 degrees. So basically that means that the balls are not on top and on the bottom of this. So it's basically like um, no ball here, but like 45 degree offset. We just need to pay attention a bit uh, when we put those together. Transferring heat the inserts. I'm a bit nervous if, like, all the changes I made broke something. I didn't notice yet. <laughs> Will be, will be fun to see. And some of those parts also are a little bit warm, which is definitely not helping at all. So this one, for example, like has a little bit of warping going on here on the, on the front corner. And the last one. Oh, that would mean we can put this one together. Uh, but also here we are missing the bearing stack. Oh, it's also interesting. Like there's quite a bit of a of a rift, like like a. It will be interesting. Like there's a quite big, big gap here on top. It's not quite intentional. 
need to be a bit careful when we put them together. Let's do the other one. I feel a bit bad about like all the prototyping parts I, I throw away. But I guess it's just like part of the process, right? If you like build something from scratch, then stuff doesn't work out all the time. And so far it's actually quite okay. So like the all the parts that are printed for the for the gantry were like in total, I think 200 grams of filament. So it was not horrendously or like horrendous amounts of filament going to waste. If we now get it to work on a second try, I think it's a good, good quad. Sunny gets a matching part. Oh, I see the chat is, is broken again. Let me quickly see if I can fix that. It's like every st stream this is broken. Uh, I fix it before and it's like broken during again. It's like a mystery to me. What is wrong there? Alright, let's leave it like that. Sometimes always, or like so, sometimes always, <laughs> I often burn myself. Um, or not burn, but like I, I touch the heat inserts I just put in, and they're of course pretty hot still. So. I'm very confident with uh, holding the part in the wrong way. complete. These are the old part. And then we only have the corner pieces left. Let's quickly... Oh, you also don't see the printer, do you? There we go. Looks good. Like it's a really short print, and then we have all the parts we need. Bit of a bummer I forgot that in the first place. That kind of obvious in, in retrospect.
very repetitive work now, unfortunately. Let's just start with one side. I mean, it doesn't really matter which side it is. Yeah, you actually kind of see it. Oh, this one was the one where we tried to apply a bit of grease. That was a bit of grease. Um, but yeah, it's just like dust and debris on on the on the rod. So it's basically just like it, it kind of like disintegrated. Oh, we're trying to use it. Hi there, Marcos. Uh, what would be the estimate bomb cost for this printer? Um, I don't know. Like, I mean, my initial, uh, my initial idea, right, was like to have this like hyper cheap printer for like less than 100 euro. Like, not like as a super capable machine, but just like as a fun project to build in a certain sense. Um, but yeah, but now, like between like last stream and this stream, I kind of made the decision. I now just like go for standard parts um i think if you would be, like if this works as i build it now you would look at maybe 200 250 euros to buy everything uh something around that roughly but then it, it should be a relatively capable printer so let's see but yeah don't this is more like um me trying to to make something work uh, i can't really promise on every anything uh, it's also like the first time I built something like that, so there's a learning experience here. So let's try to get rid of parts that don't have any value to us. Um, these are new, and these are new. Um, oh, sorry, I missed the second part. Uh, do you plan on closing it? No, this part, uh, this I'm not gonna plan on it closing maybe in like a second iteration or something uh, but for the first iteration now i really just try to get it to work that's my first first case or first plan basically um and closing is a bit difficult um because of the way it's constructed with the linear rods um if you would use like at least this is my, my impression uh if you use um just like normal aluminum extrusions to construct the printer. Um, it's way easier to enclose it because you have like surfaces on the outside where you can mount the enclosure to. Whereas I basically don't have those like nice mounting surfaces. Um, but so like, yeah, eventually it would be nice. Um, there was already somebody else um, in one of my YouTube um, posts, I guess. Uh, who said like it would be really cool to have like a cheap cork Y printer um, that, that is enclosed. Uh, and I totally get that. Um, I think it's just like quite challenging to do. Let's see. So for now, like my goal is just to make a print. And then second iteration. Let's see what we can do. Like either we make it cheaper overall, or maybe enclosure is like a really cool like extension of the project. But yeah, number one, it needs to work. Okay, uh, let's just pick one, it doesn't really matter. The only like the the cool thing about the design now is basically you can scale it up or down as you want like i mean there's obviously a limit on the upper size um but i'm aiming now for like a 180 by 180 print bed like basically i'm, I'm i just ordered like the print bed of a prusa mini um but you can also just make the rods shorter oh that's crooked I have to be a bit more careful when I pull out the heat that's insert. Okay, that's a bummer. 
Um, my heat insert tip just broke. Um, it didn't break in a good way. Thank you. I guess we have to work with a normal tip. Okay. I, it was just a matter of time because I always used it to like feel, try out the, the thing. And it's brass. Brass is not good. Ah, okay. That sucks. Let's see. Let me see what what tip uh, I have is, is best for that. Mm, this one might be a bit unstable. Mm, this one goes in a bit too deep. Well, I guess if I have to choose between unstable and deep, uh, unstable is better. Okay, then we have to use this like quite quite big tip. Um, but I can't use it to pry it. So let's just do the following, then um, we don't take apart the old pieces. Hey, what a bummer. Let's see if that works. Yeah, don't throw away the part. Yeah. <laughs> don't throw out the part that we were like working on. Yeah, that works quite okay. I have to be a bit more careful with like in which direction I press, but. It's like another order I have to make. It actually works really well. Okay. Could have could have been worse. Well. Actually, like those parts, I printed in this orientation. As they were like setting up on the surface here, and this was like all printed in like overhangs. Um, because we figured out like at one point that this is the most or like strongest orientation to print them in. Because it kind of like spreads the load between the layers for all the different heated inserts. Quite funny, like when I built my first Voron, I was so concerned with the heat set inserts. Hmm. But now it's just like such a routine. <laughs> Even with like the wrong soldering iron tip, it kind of works quite, quite well. I actually had like a bit of a oopsie while ordering heat set inserts. And I'm constantly running out of those now that I work on this project. And I was like, okay, let's just order so many that I don't have to worry about it anymore. Same with uh, screws. I ordered like tons and tons of screws now for the sizes I need. Only problem is I ordered the wrong size of heat set inserts. 
So now I have 500 M3 heated inserts with the wrong dimensions. <laughs> I'm not quite sure yet what to do with those. It's not a big deal, like they have the same depth. It's just like instead of like 5 millimeter auto diameter, they have 4.2. Somehow I, I put the wrong thing in my in my shopping basket. Um what I'm thinking about like for the rest of the build, like for the for the bat and everything. If I just use the different heat set inserts, because for me it's just the parameter infusion I can quickly change before exporting. That was, I first thought like I, I screwed up the 3D model because all the heat set inserts just fell into place. <laughs> but no, the model was correct, the inserts were wrong. Almost done with heat set inserts. Oh, and I also ordered like a shorter rod. Like the moment we are building the printer with like 30 or 300 millimeter rods, so 30 centimeters. Um, but I actually figured out that we don't need 300. 250 is enough. Like we are going to lose like three, four millimeters on the print bed in uh, X direction. But the overall machine will be like five centimeter, like, like less wide. So I figured that's a good, good compromise. Oh, there's actually also um oh yeah here we forgot one i really hope this works <laughs> Because if it now doesn't work, like I'm a bit out of ideas. Okay, uh, let's quickly double check. There's nothing here. There's one here and one there. Let's just quickly add that. It's also like two two weeks since I designed those parts, so I kind of forgot a lot of things. Here we go. And these are complete. Uh, this one is complete. And then we have one big part here still, and then this one. And these two also need one each, and then we're done. We're like doing heat set inserts straight for like half an hour. I'm really sorry that this is not the most engaging, interesting <laughs> work I have to do. This actually works quite well with this uh, tip 
I feel like it's um, a bit easier to push them in. Potentially, like the tip is like a bit like heavier or like has more thermal mass. Just a bit difficult to like push them in straight. I really feel like I'm using too many screws. Like there must be a better way to, <laughs> to do that. Okay, this is complete. And this one still has four. So six, six heats of inserts left. Oh, it's a lion. There's uh, one more part. Yeah, one, one more part. This one. Okay, and this one we have to be a bit careful because a bit of a small part. Okay. Ah, there's one more. <laughs> but actually, we don't have to do this. We can reuse the, the old one. Um, so four, four left. Four left. Maybe I should also build one of those like heat set insert presses. I mean, it's kind of like one of those situations where like it kind of works fine if you do it by hand like it's not a big deal but it's kind of nice to be able to do it like in a more consistent way i actually wanted to build one at some point i think and never did it But on the other hand, it's like one more tool you have to flying around and it's relatively big in a certain sense. Hmm, okay. I think that's it. By the way, I have this like export script in Fusion. 
Um, so basically, I, I mark all the components um, that are to be exported. And it's just like running through and rotating all the components in the correct orientation to be printed because like the, the orientation in the infusion is not always the correct orientation to print it of course um so all the parts have like in their name um you all see it like flying around here for some reason like it, it doesn't undo some of the temporary rotations i always have to use it um, but like in the print parts, like it says like everything with the E is like export and then it's the name. And then at the end, it's like the X, Y, Z, like rotation it has to do. But the fun part is it also like it, it tells me exactly how many of each part I need. So for example, some parts, right, you need like two um, or like more than two. But it also gives me the exact hardware list, like all the screws and everything are modeled. So I know I need 24 of those um, bearings we purchased now, uh, 24 of the M3 shims. Um, and then this is 91 heat set inserts. So uh, we now did 91 heat set inserts, I think. <laughs> so that's, that's success, I think. Um, cool, then, yeah, I think we can just start. Oops putting it together. Um, let's maybe just continue where we left off, right? Let's just continue where we left off with this part here, um, because we now have the spacer. The spacer basically has the same height as two shims and uh, two bearings. Yeah, that fits well. So this just sits in here in this like cavity. Then we put this part on top and this one, this one. And then we kind of have to guess the screw lengths. I mean, I could look it up, but... I'm not tightening those, I just put it in place so that the parts are like held together. But then basically this is a little bit like loose and we can just put in the, put in the rod. Um, which warrant word is this? Um, I actually don't know where it is. Um, here, yeah. uh, this is the mini stealth burner Bowden. Uh, so the normal min mini stealth burner has the um, the extruder on top, right? And this is the Bowden version. Um, we're not using this anymore, actually. Uh, we're going for direct drive. <laughs> That's part of my um, dropping the uh, price limit. Uh, so we are going now for, oh, there's a hole. Is there a hole missing? Ah, okay. There's one layer accidentally. Um, so we're going for a direct drive mini stealth burner in the first go. No more Bowden. Um, I think it looks quite cool, right? Like it's kind of like a neat little tool head. I'm kind of happy that I accidentally ordered the black screws. It kind of looks cool. Yep. So it's all like a little bit loose, so we can just put in the different rod. So this one is complete. Uh, here we quickly have to um, swap out the bearings back. Okay. 
And looking at my control monitor now, like this is extremely dark. That's actually, that's actually okay, I think. At some point I will, I will stop doing black projects and just do something, you know, with normal color. <laughs> Much easier to film. So basically we just take out two of the bearings and I just put some random M3 washer there. Of course it doesn't work. The only thing when you always need to pay attention, right? They always need to be like uh, mirrored. So here um, we have the bearing on the bottom. So on this side, we need to have the bearing on top. They always have to be mirrored left and right. It doesn't really matter what side is which. Um, the only important part is that it's always mirrored. And then we put the... Oh no, now we're building it the, the wrong way again. We first have to put on the baser. And then the stuff. That's the way. And here we are. Perfect. In, in the end, basically, like the important part is just it's mirrored, uh, like up, up, down, mirrored, basically. Uh, but then which belt runs on top on which side uh, makes no difference. Okay, then these two parts are mirrored. So we have the two holes on the bottom and then we have, this is basically just offset. Okay, done. Um, yeah, maybe let's just do one of the XY joints. Let's quickly see. One of those bearings has a mark. This one, there's a very faint Y. Like these are so much better than the other ones. And then basically I have the four ticks around, which are kind of like gone on this one. But the important part is, you see like there's a row of balls in there, right? And there are four, four of those rows. Uh, so basically you don't want to have a row on top and you don't want to have a row on bottom. Because if you move it like this and there's a row on top, because of gravity, um, this is the only row of balls that will have later contact with the rod. So you have to basically make sure there's no row of balls on top. So by putting this together, we just have to be a bit cautious to not rotate that like, accidentally. And we also need to be a bit careful here with tightening. It doesn't have to be crazy tight. And the parts, like the, the blue parts, are a bit warped. So I think we can over tighten that a bit. Oh, we forgot a heat set insert? Oh, yeah, we did. Oh, no. I'm not even sure how to put this in there. I did not think that all. No. There's one heated insert here.
like this. Actually, can I? Just maybe making the image a tad brighter for the black parts. Okay, let's try to, to maneuver that in. Okay, that actually actually worked quite okay, but you have to be really careful. Yeah, and this basically just sits then down there. Maybe this is one heat set insert I should just not have at all and just screw directly into the plastic there. Because it's only like for the bearing stack. So there's no like um, pulling force on that. So it doesn't have to be like super secure in the plastic. Um, Thomas Salander, uh, made with layers, also made a video like more or less recently, I think, uh, where he compared um, the strength of screws directly into plastic, um, screws into plastic with modeled uh, threads. And um, the heat set inserts, like different heat set inserts actually. And the result was like the strength doesn't really matter. Like if you only screw it in once basically and you don't take it apart, like the strength is the same. Like what fails first is always the plastic. Um, just check checking the rows and they are properly aligned. You see like there's no row of ball bearings on the bottom. It's just not Super good that there's a bit of like um, overhang there, but it should be fine. Cool, so that's one part. Uh, let's also put the stack in. Um, and I think, yeah, let's, no, let's use black here. So these just go in here and then they connect to the heat set insert we just put in. Uh, also here, like it doesn't matter what goes where. We should have done that before putting that together. On the other side, let's do it the other other way around. This is like super. Okay, so let's just do uh, on this side the easy, easy one. Uh, okay, maybe I take the party. Let's see if we find a good way putting that. Okay, next one. Okay. Almost there, watcher. On the other side, let's do first stack and then put it together. Hey, okay, I almost had it. Whoever designed that, horrible. Let's actually use just tweezers. Okay, let's take it apart. <laughs> Shit. Uh, too bad.
I wonder if I can um, add slots here. Do not make it a hole, but just a slot. Then you can basically like aim it like this and, and put the screw down. Okay, so this will make it a bit easier, but I think it will still be a bit challenging to, to put the stack here. Yeah, that's... This looked easier in Fusion. Let's see if he... Yeah, there we go. One stack. Cool. Let's also do the other side right away. Um, we have to add the heated insert. That we forgot. It actually works quite well. Uh, and here we need to do it the opposite way. So we first have to add the spacer. First spacer. One bearing. Two bearing. Now the fun part is we have to fiddle a spacer in between there on top. Yeah, okay. That's something I definitely have to remodel. Yeah, no. Like, it, it works, but it's not nice. I think it's really just like, it, this is like not a hole, but just like a slot, you know, like two slots. So you really can like put it together, put it in like this, and then like rotate it in. And it should be much, much better. Um, this is still in position. And then we have like another stack to fill in because I think the, the front one won't be much better. I'm still quite sure if I like this uh, turquoise blue. Like before, I had this very matte PLA. It's also blue, but like way like more subtle color. And I kind of like this combination way more than this like bright, bright turquoise. Okay, so here we have the roller on the bottom. So for the front, it needs to be on top. So we need a washer. A bearing. Sorry for not being on camera. Second bearing. Okay. 
Okay, and we kind of have to squeeze the washer in between on top. Also make sure that the hind one is a bit loose because then we have like a bit more flex. Yeah, that helps a lot. Yeah, it's okay. I feel like I'm getting a bit better with those, but definitely not a good design. Okay, so one side is complete. Let's go here. Um, now I forgot, like, did we take off the two bearings already that we wanted to use here? Like, there's one bearing inside here. These are the cheap bearings. Yeah, we don't want to use those. Hey, yeah. Oh, it's 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 stuck in here. Never mind. That's in the correct position. And this one was the one with the bigger gap on top, so let's be a bit more cautious here with tightening that. Yeah, it still has a bit of a gap. I think like the part just is a bit warped. I'll just leave it like this. I'm not over tightening that. Should be should be fine. Okay, the last of the annoying bearing stacks. The rest should be better. Here we have the stack on the back on top, so the front one needs to be on the bottom. Get some more bearings. Yeah, bearing on the bottom is, is much easier, I oh, think. I sat while losing the washer. Now it's stuck to my finger. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Trying to put a washer on a screw. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I definitely have to change the line of that.
but they're all smooth they're not touching anything so technically like like it works like it's a bit of pain to install but besides this it should be should be good quickly add this top bracket here that will hold the x-axis it's also like one point i'm a bit concerned like i was looking at like different printer designs again that use um those rods for like x and one pattern i found they always have the x rods um like vertical of each other but i have them horizontal of each other and they all have like larger spacing so i hope we're not running into any problem with this layout because nobody else is doing this layout um like one example is for example like the the um Krusha mark three has it on top of each other and with like a larger gap in between the creality um ender 3v3 has the same setup uh linear rods but then basically like work like on top of each other in a larger distance this doesn't quite fit I think it's just a bad print. Ah, there's a bit of material here. Ah, still not quite but better. Okay. So yeah, I'm a bit concerned what we find. Um, because there's not really like an easy way to 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 redesign this to have this on top of each other. Uh, I mean, we can extend this, of course, indefinitely to the top, but not quite ideal. Okay, so these two are all for them. Um, this is the old part. Where we actually need that slat. I didn't reprint them. So we have to quickly take this apart. This part we need basically. Okay. Then let's put together those fine parts. They're a bit more simple now. Basically, just always like those like three screws. Holding these side pieces together. I made this all a bit beefier. Wait, there's one, two, three. I hit four. And looking at this, we might have used the wrong parts for the heated inserts. Yeah. See that this one here has it going through. I will put a heated heated insert in. I think the ones that are going through were meant for. But also, it doesn't quite. Okay. Let's put them aside for now. We'll need to figure it out when we put it together. Let's just put it together. Okay, one, 
Um, this one goes here. Like all those side pieces are a tiny bit different. Like not all of them, I think they're like four different variations. This one, for example, has like this through hole here. Uh, this one doesn't have anything. And then almost there. Last one. Last one. And then we need to quickly figure out this corner situation. The seated insert is not quite in, I think. Let me quickly see. Yeah, this one is like super angled. We have to quickly push this in. Like it's like standing out on one side. It's like where well, the part doesn't quite fit. Let's quickly do the other side while the bordering iron is heating up. in a bit more. Yeah, no, it's better. It's really just like a teeny tiny bit. Yeah, yeah, no, it works. Okay, now the corners thing. So basically we have these two parts and they are on top. So these need the heated insert. Um, and the heated insert, you see, they don't have like a, a channel here. So this one is the correct one. And here we have one with the channel and the heated insert. So this one is wrong. Um, so we need to quickly add a heated insert here. And then we can put this in. Oh, uh, I forgot this. I'm not sure if you can see this, but this is super messy printed. Like there's like uh, this sacrificial layer is missing. I don't want to tic Not so poor man's core XY. Did you have to make uh, a lot of design changes? Not really. Um, the only big change I now made is basically I, I said like all these like cheap solutions I find 
um, they're not really working properly. And I first want to get like a printer that is working. Um, and then I will kind of like try to replace some of the parts I added uh, with like cheap homemade print solutions. Um, so basically my, my goal for now is just like to make a printer. <laughs> Um, like, I'm not going all out on, on cost, of course, but it's not like cutting every possible corner. Um, the things like now with all the parts I added, because I added the linear rods, and I added the linear bearings, and I added um, the, the normal um, bearing stacks. Uh, I'm way over 100 euros by now. Like, it's more like 100. Oh, it's not deep enough. Uh, it's more like 180 euros, I would say. Um, so yeah, and it's also like for now. Then I'm also going for like a proper print bed because like initially my idea was um, to not use a normal print bed for the for the sub 100 euro version. Um, so yeah, I ordered now all the parts. I, I could tally it up, uh, given that like the parts I ordered now are correct and what I need. And I don't have to order anything more. I should have no final price in a certain sense. But yeah, step one, let's make a printer. And then step two, let's make a cheap printer. I mean, like somebody also like, or like two people already suggested it would be cool for the printer to be enclosed, which obviously doesn't really help with the price tag. Um, but then I was thinking maybe that's like a cool thing instead of like having like super cheap printer. It's like a reasonably cheap printer um, that is enclosed. So let's see. Maybe I go this way. But for now, let's first make it print. Like today, I just want to put together the gantry and hope that like the gantry uh, works as expected now. Okay, I don't have black screws for those like eight millimeter ones. Uh, we can replace them at some point. Uh, let's quickly check what I what I was thinking with those corner pieces. Like, how are they supposed to? Ah, yeah, I see it. So basically, the corner piece is it's the other way around. Um, so this one here. It's supposed to be here, and now you can access the screw head from the bottom. Now I put in this heated insert here. Let's print this part again. Um, I, I I don't think we we can we can salvage that. It's such a like delicate part. It's this one here, yeah. Let's just slice. And print it quickly. It's like we'll have it in ten minutes. I'm going to restart that. If my printer will, it it's a quick thing. Let's try in parallel if we can salvage that. Now it's like the, the opening is too large. Yeah, don't have to try. Um, text commands, I had no idea it was there. Uh, yeah, it's not really there. One second, let me quickly. Oh, yeah, now it's on. Um, let me quickly upload that and then. Yeah, now it's ready. Uh, yeah, text commands is quite cool. Um, I mean, I don't use it. It's just like the output of my export script. Um, it's like I have this like structure where I like uh, mark certain here's the E for export and there's X, Y joint left base A and then like it's the orientation in which it should export. Um, 
and then basically um, it exports all the files as step and as stl in the current orientation and just gives me like a summary of the part list like how often which part is used you see for example here's a couple of like two times um, and then also because I model all the hardware, it gives me like a full hardware bomb, like all the fasteners that are used, which is like super handy actually. So I now know that we had 91 heated inserts to install, plus one extra. Um, yeah, that's like, that's really cool. Um, what scripting language I'll use? Um, you can use Python or C++. And it actually comes with like, I fusion comes with some pre-made scripts. Like there's the sample scripts here. Uh, and I have this like export by components. I, I'm not sure if I published it at some point, but like, somebody online made it and I copied it. And I made some adapt uh, adaptions to that, but it's, I'm sure we can show... No, I don't think I can show that right now. Um, but if you want to, I can send it to you. It's really handy. Like, it's just like you have the components in the tree. And then you just put this E marker on the component. And then, like, the script knows you want to export this component. And then you can optionally put that um, orientation in the name. And then we'll just like rotate the, the component before export. So if you have like a certain orientation you want to print a part in, you can just export it this way and then like the, the exported SCL will have the correct orientation. Um, let's see. So, how do we go about that? So, the one corner piece is not missing. Oh, we still have to put on the, the tool head here. Let's quickly do that. Yeah, I added eyebrows. <laughs> not sure you can see it on stream, but they're like little eyebrows here now. It looks like. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think we can just take some these two are like reasonably smooth. Like like these this batch is really good for some reason. Mm, let's do the same thing that we put it on in a way that like no um row of balls is on the top on the top. And then this just goes on front here. I'm quite proud of myself actually. Like we only use two different types of screws now. It's all M3 by 12 and M3 by 16, uh, 20, 25. The only place where another screw is used is in the in the tool hatch, which is like the mini style burner, because there you use one uh, M like three M3 by 16s, uh, two M3 by 16 for the uh, hot end mounts that I use, and then the two M3 by 35 that go through the eyes here, basically. Yep, that's it. Um, we can copy these parts. Just directly over. These are the belt plants.
And I guess we can now start. Assembling it again. I'm not quite sure how to start there, to be honest. I think maybe let's just do the two sides first. Um, with the corner blocks at the end. So there we used one rod. Mm. So I, I have a couple of those like proper smooth rods and the rest is all like hardware. Like all the surfaces were like a uh, linear bearings rolling on, like it's a smooth rod. And everything else is just like those cheap hardware store aluminium rods. Which I think works quite okay so far. And the good thing is like the way we mount them, like you have like a bit of play with the length, like they don't have to be exactly the same length. There's a bit of compensation. Oh. Um, this is the wrong one. This one. Oh, this is wrong. Ha. There's half a hole and half no hole. Let's see, do we... Oh, yeah, this one. I had one extra of those pieces. Not sure why I printed one extra. So this one goes here. Hi Dabsack, it's been a while. Yeah, like I didn't stream last week, uh, I was a bit sick. Like maybe you can still hear it, like my nose is a little bit stuffy. Um, so I skipped one week. But I also like we, I was waiting for parts last week, so there was also not much I could have done. So I think it's quite, quite good how it turned out. Uh, Arda, I'm a bit late today. Hope you everything is fine. Yeah, like it's going great so far. Let's see if it continues. Let's see if it continues. Um, but yeah, like we put in all the heated inserts. Oh, like. I thought my printer is making a weird sound and there's a horse outside. Like uh, we have policemen on horses sometimes. I think there's a like two policemen on horses, like the, the, the hooves were like making sounds on the, on the road and I thought it was like my printer. <laughs> I was very confused for a second. Um, but yeah, like I'm, I'm really optimistic this will now all work well and fine. We just have to put it back together. Hi there, Jonas. Oh, um, I'm not going to tighten this one yet. We need to kind of figure out the proper uh, distance, which I'm actually quite sure how we can measure that now, because I don't think it, like before it matched this height here, if we were able to copy this, like tighten it here. Oh yeah, it still, still matches, I think. Let's just use the calipers as a spacer. And then we can tighten that. Yeah, this should be good. Okay, so that's one side. Uh, we just forgot one crucial thing. 
<laughs> we should have put on the um, the XY join, right? That would have made sense. Oh, let's not loosen this one because this one also sets the height here. Let's just loosen the front. That's easier. Be careful with like putting this in. Like the first batch of linear ball bearings I had was so horrific. Like I, I lost so many balls just like putting that on. Uh, metal rod distance in that maybe. Um, the rod distance is not that important because we're only like running on the top rod. Uh, I was wondering there should be something between the two ends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were the only one wondering because I was not smart enough to see that. But I actually um, changed the design of those parts a bit. Like the earlier iterations had um, like a 45 degree angle here, so the black part went over the rod. So it was really difficult, like you couldn't remove the XY joint without removing the rod. Um, now basically the only thing that's stuck is the bearing itself. Like you cannot remove the bearing without like loosening this. Yeah. This is all a bit like crooked right now, but we'll figure it out like once everything is, is together. Let's put this here and then we can make the opposite side. But let's also quickly insert the vertical stud here. Because this one, we also have to loosen it here. Yep, okay. I really feel like I over-engineer those clamps. <laughs> I use like so many screws to like everything is like properly like squeezed and tight. I feel like most likely I can leave out like half the screws and it will still work perfectly fine. So again like one cheap hardware store rod and one proper smooth rod. And let's also be smart and add this in front right away. Okay, then we need on top this corner piece here, and then on bottom we have this one. Also insert the vertical stud. Just tighten the top one. And then let's just use the caliper again to yep, that's the correct distance. Mm -hmm. 
it was reasonably straight. And in a few seconds, we will have the missing corner piece. I'm not learning, am I? I like. I, I just hope I can make the excuse that it's like on stream and like I'm talking and I'm distracted. <laughs> but if you make the exact same mistake twice in a row, that's kind of stupid. We have to loosen and tighten this all, like all the screws, like a little bit, anyways. Again, uh, like once everything is put together, we kind of because the length of the rods is not perfect. Uh, I cut them by hand, and my cutting skills are interesting, <laughs> to say the least. Let's give this like a second to cool down. Um, so basically, that means. Why do I have one extra of those? I don't know. Let's put it in the recycling bag. Um, so basically the rod distance are all a little bit off. Um, but the way we clamp them, like basically there's like always one and a half centimeters of like distance. Uh, so basically we can adjust everything like for a couple millimeters and it's like no big deal at all. Okay, um, let's put stacks. Um, we did not learn, so we kind of like have to build the stack in between here again. I don't want to loosen that, so uh, maybe. Yeah, let's see. Um, the direction again doesn't matter. We just have to do it like differently on on each side. That's the only only important part. So. Am I loosening this again? I feel like this should be the first connection you, you make. Somebody should write a manual for that. Step by step. Let's get rid of this. Um, yeah, I feel like it's really like easiest to first build the stack. Okay. Quickly grab an Allen key. So I basically just have the Allen key and the screw on the bottom. And now it should be really easy to put the stack together. So we have the spacer, we have a washer, we have two bearings. And we have another washer. And then we just put this in here. And it can be like loose and wiggly. It doesn't really matter, I think. Let me just tighten the bottom one first, or like the top one, depending on the orientation. And then we use our caliper again to kind of set the distance, but like the screw kind of like uh, set the minimum distance already. It's actually quite good if you do this first, because now you can just push it together and this will set the distance automatically. It's a feature, not a bug. Here we go. Let's quickly repeat this on the other side. Yay.
Uh, and again, like we just have to mirror the stack. So the two bearings need to be on the bottom this time because they were on the top on the other side. So here we start with a washer. Then a bearing and another bearing and the washer and the last spacer. Okay, on this side we can also do the, the corner stack. But I think here it's easiest to remove the corner piece. And for the corner we have um, basically two on top, right? Because like both belts need to go around the corner. So we can just put in the screw from the back here. And put a washer. Bearing, bearing. Then two washers. And bearing, bearing. And now we have to here on our like corner piece and then we can just Drop the entire stack. This was smart. I don't think I'm capable of uh, building a Core XY system without at least once dropping an entire stack. Okay, this one also better to do it before tightening things i think because now it's like incredibly tight no now it falls just in place Kind of have to work on the order of, of things here. The screws for this corner piece are not really good because the printed parts are a bit defect there. Something I also have to fix. I'm missing like supports there for the hole, so the the, the hole was printed mid air.
So, Ooh. this is the first of two. Let's look at the corner piece here. Let's apply our learning right away and loosen it again. Here's the corner piece. Let's quickly clean out those holes. Could have fixed it before reprinting it, but where would the fun be with good parts? Last bearing sack. Oh, we actually have to open the last pack of our bearings. 24 in total. Washer. Bearing, bearing. Oh. Washer, washer. And then two more bearings. Oh, I'm missing one washer. Washer on top. Tighten that screw at all? I don't think so. Okay, let's tighten these again. The distance is now set automatically, so there's not much we need to pay attention to. And... I definitely have to order like black M3 by 8 screws for those corner pieces. Like now that all screws are black, <laughs> they also need to be black. I mean, this looks way better than the last iteration. And then we have two shorter rods in the back here. I'm not gonna even sh um, tighten both um, because the x-axis has to set the width basically so this is just super loose for now which is totally fine those linear bearings are so much better uh, and then on one side we have to remove this cover And on one side we can <laughs> um, I could have foresee that that would happen. Let's just tighten one side. And then we have to put on our tool hat. And I need to be very careful. It's always like Inserting two linear bearings at once, it's a bit of a pain. 
Yeah, let me actually remove the, the hind one. I think it's better to assemble this one. It's better to assemble this one like when the bearings are on, on the rod. Let's just make sure that the orientation is correct. Like I added those like little um, in, uh, marks. Where the roller stacks are inside. So now I know that basically from the orientation, there's no ball bearing or like row of balls on top. It's like here and here, here and here. Let's just leave it like this for now and first secure it on the other side. Oh, I know TV Autumn is like another rod. There's now one more on front, which we didn't add yet. And we need to make sure everything is kind of aligned and, and straight. Because right now it's definitely not. That's the width is the x-axis. That's the important part. So basically, I would now try to put this together as much as possible here. Now we can tighten this. And then everything has to align around that. just Oops. carefully try to move this to the back turn it around and stop if this would not have come out oh. okay, so this now sets the width right so now we can tighten those and we know like those, like the width of the x-axis and the width on the back aligns perfectly. And then we can care about the front. The front is a bit iffy because I know that the, the rod I have is like relatively short. <laughs> Uh, it would be better if it would be like five, six millimeters longer. There's not a lot of overlap, but it it, it works.
So the data we kept this where? Ah, now it's a bit too tight on the back. Let me loosen one side again. How did that happen? Okay, and this is now right. Yeah, uh, maybe the rod on the front is just too short. We need to see. Do we have to? Yeah, it's just like really like on 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 the edge. Like there's not of overlap. But this one is a bit. This one is a bit longer. Maybe I use this one. Yeah, this one is a tiny bit longer. Let's let's use this one.
not quite sure. Oh, now it works again. Okay, I have no clue what just happened. Like I just unplugged and replugged the mic. Um, okay, sorry for that. Thanks for the sick tag for pointing that out. So I was basically saying like now it seems to work quite well. No clue what was up with the mic. I'm back. Cool. Thanks, Sada. <laughs> Eddie Harlem. Cool. Um, yeah, but those linear bearings are so much better than the other ones. I, I, I don't even know why. But just imagine, like, or like, not imagine, but like, a couple of streams, like, where we were. Um, you know, like, where this not even worked. Like, I mean, we're kind of, like, iterating, um, but there's still progress, I think. So, let's put this back on. No, off know where the random screw came from. And then I would say, let's throw on some belts. Oh, by the way, I totally forgot to mention. Maybe I, I did mention, but um, I have shorter rods on, on the way. So basically the X and Y rods will be five centimeters shorter. Um, this will be enough to cover the print area I want to cover, which is 180, sorry, uh, 180 squared. Oh, we're looking at it now, like it's not quite square. Let's try to work this out a bit. Um, try to loosen dots again let's just play around for a couple of minutes um it doesn't need to be no let's take, let's ignore it i just said i have shorter rods on the way so basically what i will do like between streams is i will take this apart again and just swap out all the rods so for now my focus would be that the motion system is working whether it's square or not it's not super important right now i think like 100 square is not super important right now um, so let's rather put some belts on that. Um, I did not order new belts, so we're still going for the for the cheap for the cheap belts. Let's just first fiddle them through and then put this on. They should be cut to, like they're the exact same length. We know that, right? Because we cut them last stream, I think. So the only thing we need to make sure is that like they have the same amount of teeth coming out. too much no now they are the same so it's really important for us to have the same tension uh, on on both belts later and the step one is basically that they are the exact same length Oh. Oh. This is one belt. <laughs> this is the other. <laughs> Let's try it again. Uh, what speed and acceleration are you aiming for? Um, zero. Like, my goal right now is just to have it print uh, or like move, and then everything else is secondary. 
Uh, but I'm not quite sure if we will hit like super high speeds. Like it's not my goal. Um, I will run some acceleration tests and stuff later. Like once it's running and everything. Um, but I don't think the frame is necessarily rigid enough um, to support that. So I think there will be limitations just like that the frame being built as it is. Uh, it's not quite rigid enough. Like we can make it more rigid um, by adding cross beams and stuff like that. So potentially we can improve that. But for now, let's just uh, make it print and then, then we see. Okay, now we have two belts. Let me just kind of like put one in the middle and we don't care about that. And we run the bottom belt first. And the bottom belt on this side. Goes to the back first. Oh, put it in the wrong way. These need to go to the outside. I'm just, I really hope everything aligns and it's nice. And we don't have twists in the belt. Okay, let's do it again. Without twists. Here we go. Then on the back. Oh, we also need to install a motor now, of course. So we have one motor here already. And the other one we have to quickly take apart. Basically, we have these slats, they go in first, and then the motor go in. We all need to quickly see where I put my where I put my pulleys. Then we have this like nut here at the back we can use for tensioning later. Okay. Pretty sure the pulleys are ah, I see pulleys, but the wrong ones. I just quickly really dump my entire goodie bag. We have a raspberry, we have an empty bag. We have end stops, another empty bag, tool head, extruder part, screws, more screws, fans. Mm. Oh, I put them here. <laughs> uh, um, the little mini motors are gone. Yes, um, that's basically like new strategy is first make it print and then we can we can make fancy stuff. Um, but yeah, first 
back back to the basics. So for now, let's just use the Neymar 17. Like the motor mounts can still support the small ones, and I definitely want to make that work. Um, like a, I think the the other hacks I did, like with the printed bearings and stuff, like not sure if we will, we will ever get it to work. Um, but the printed motors, uh, the, the small motors will 100% work. I'm very confident on that, actually. So this goes around. Then this goes through the... Oh, shit. Ah, I made a mistake. multiple mistakes but firstly it's kind of unlooped itself back here um so basically the mistake is on this front idler the bearing six on the bottom and on this one it's on the top but they need to be swapped um so we have to take this apart quickly no way around that. Ah, annoying. Didn't pay attention to that. I only pay attention it's like opposite, it's like mirror, but I didn't pay attention to this and this matches. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. Take this off. And I kind of have to disassemble the entire front idler. Hey, this is annoying. We can basically just swap the two stacks. At least we don't have to build the stack. Let's, let's look for the positives. Both parts here. And there's one stack. Um, uh, compromise of having full symmetrical parts versus having specialized printed parts per side. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I think if you have a manual, it's kind of fine. Um, but if you do it on the fly, like, you really have to pay attention, and I did not. Uh, but yeah, that's the thing, like, I, all the parts I did so far are completely mirrored. Like, I do not make any specialized left-right parts. They're all mirrored. Um, partly just to keep it simple. Um, but yeah, technically you can just add like specialized parts in the mix to prevent something like this. Oh, can I get it out? Here we go. So let's now pay attention. Um, this side needs to have the one on the lower. Put this all right back here.
just a teeny tiny minor extra step. At the crop beam again. Let's tighten it step by step, and then nothing ever happens. Good that we didn't spend a lot of time squaring that so far. Okay, that works well, so we can continue. Actually, I had like a little curve here, so you can really just push in the, the belt on the side, and it just comes out in front. And then last touch is back to home here. Okay, I see a potential problem in the back. Let's quickly tighten the belt and then we can we can see if we if we mess up. So let's just push this in from the back. Use some like pen through, but not quite. Here we go. Okay. Ooh, we escaped a catastrophe. Barely. Um, I'm gonna show this. So here, the belt almost touched. Like there's like a hair in between here. I have to really like get this. Excel to turn off my camera. It's maybe not the best way. See the belts here? Like they don't touch, but like by by m less than a millimeter. I think once it's tensioned, it's okay. But there's like really not a lot left. Yeah, that's lucky. So basically, like the the front stack needs to be moved like a millimeter forward, then it's like not a problem. 
Uh, but I had quite a bit of trouble like squeezing that in there. Um, <laughs> so it's like quite tight, but let's see. Um, let's actually run the second belt and then tighten everything and see how it goes. So the second belt. goes to the front first. And then goes all the way to the back. And around. And now we need a second motor. So let's quickly steal one from our donor. Lock that here, of course. This does not want to come out. Even with the lock, like the screws are pretty much out and still like... Huh. Interesting. Why is this... I, I don't know why this is so tight. Wait, let me quickly put all of this in the bag so I don't lose the parts. Uh, is this like accidentally? Oh, I, I, I just saw a mistake again. Wait, okay, let's quickly figure this one out. Mm. What can I use to kind of leverage it? I don't know why this is like. Let me remove the thumb screws completely. I think I put like too much Loctite in there maybe. And I, I, I accidentally glued the pulley. Looking for something to like pull it off. Yeah, but this is completely stuck. Um, I mean, they are pulley pullers. Maybe try this. I'm also kind of afraid of like breaking the motor at this point. This is completely on. God, okay. Um, I'm not quite sure, like, um, maybe IPA. Um, Alex, I'm not quite sure, like, heat, uh, I think it's glued with Loctite. 
I think this is the problem we are looking at at the moment. I'm just putting IPA on it. I don't know if that does something. Maybe let's Google. <laughs> let's Google. Remove Loctite. Uh, soaking a solvent and mechanical abrasion such as wire brush. So the question is what is the solvent? It's not very specific. Um, yeah, apply more torque, but it's not really like the situation we have. It actually says heat it up, Alex, you're right. Uh, but I don't have something to like easily heat this up right now. Mm. Yeah. Ha! The IPA did the trick. Success. IPA did the trick. So IPA is a solvent. Now there's really just like Loctite that I put on the on the thumb nut, like it just ran to the center and glued it on here. Um, let's try to clean this up a bit. I guess this is good enough. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, it's also like it doesn't. Oh, not not the next one is stuck. Um. Let me see, maybe I can use just a file. Yeah, that works. Yeah, the file did a trick. I can never get those extruder gears off the motor. Really? Like for me, it's the first time I had the problem. Like I, I, I never had trouble like getting those off. I mean, there are some that are uh, pressed, right? Like the endo motors, for example, like initially they had pressed heat settings, uh, heat settings. They had those uh, pulleys pressed on and that was an absolute pain to remove. We have a motor installed. Cool. Um, then I spotted the mistake I made here. Um, this stack is incorrectly stacked. Uh, luckily for us, it's very easy to fix. Like this could be like really pain for some other stacks, but this one 
should be relatively easy to fix because we can just remove the four screws on the back. And we should be able to pull this out. Also only have to remove the tension here a bit. Oh, I forgot this is not also screwed in, of course, on top. Here we go. And then I just flip the top bearing and we are back in game. Perfect. Not the worst mistake I did today. I think all the other stacks are fine. It's like the only one I, I did that. Okay. Let's put this back on the lower one. And then... I think maybe it's quite good to just continue working at this orientation for now. So we just make a loop, push the loop between the two. And then we go to here. And to the center. Now the question, will this work better than before? Once I have this like belt through here, this is kind of the moment of truth. So that's Make sure they are the same length. Let's add our clamp. And then... We see if there's any difference to our printed size. Firstly, the, we need to check that we didn't mess up because down here, for example, I see the belt flip off the, the uh, stack. That's of course something we need to fix. Wiggles on. Yeah, this is not on. Yes. Yes. It's working. Oh, but there's an oh, there's not a mistake here. I accidentally went uh, around the front of the front stack. We should have gone around the back. So we have to fix this. Hey, hey, hey. I'm just making mistakes. Left and right today. This needs to go around here. Maybe let's quickly double check everything else. So this looks good, right? We're going around here, this looks good. That looks good. Yeah, that was the only thing. Okay, 
That's the third attempt. It works well. Like we did not engage the models yet. So how about we tighten those? So just by moving them, I assume that the models are now kind of like, uh, like the pulleys are now in an okay position. Um, let's just tighten that. So as is preliminary, but for testing, this will be fine. Because I also didn't pay attention that like we uh, secure them on a flat side. Yes, this is amazing. You see the motor spins. So this is now including the resistance of the motor. I mean, maybe you can see it, but I can feel it like this spins. Um, this one spins as well. There you can see it. And it's really easy to move. So this is a full success. And it's actually quite, quite square by accident. Let's just, oh, uh, we're missing a nut here. Tighten that a bit more. wants to go on. Yes, it works. I'm pretty sure this was just... It's like, like right now it's like quite stiff because I tightened the belt quite a bit. Like the belts are kind of tight now. Yep. Cool. So... That is cool. Now I have one question. Yes, the end stuff works as well. <laughs> uh, we have to show, like, um, I have to redo this clamp there. But um, if I move it over, there's like this little like uh, lip and the end stuff connects there. Not sure if you hear the click. Um, the only thing is like you see like the end top at the moment like is a bit too far out, I think. Shall we install the tool head? Just for the looks. Here is a tool head. It doesn't have a hotend in at the moment, but that's fine. I have to um, break off this uh, support here. Uh, maybe, maybe not. I could use a knife. Would have been smart to do this before, but. Here we go. Now we need two M3 nuts. Which go in here. And 
immediately we have the right screws already attached. I mean, this is our little dummy printer. The only thing is like, as I mentioned, like the end stop reaches too far out. So this is now the end stop position. Uh, so we're losing like a centimeter of, uh, of distance here. So if you look at the other side, this is kind of how it's supposed to be, right? Like I actually added this like little cut here to make space for tool head. So this should be like the end stop position. So yeah, then on front, there's also enough space. Cool. I'm really happy. This is, this is amazing. Um, but can the models move it by themselves? That's a good question. Um, I think we can figure this out. Um, what we need to make that happen. um what do we need to make this happen because i think like we're not going to do electronics today or anything um but i think we can make it move by itself uh this main board has clipper flashed this main board has clipper flashed this raspberry running flipper. Conveniently, there's a power cord for that. Um, I need a power supply. And I need cables for the motors. Give me two minutes to grab some stuff and we will make this move on its own. Right back. I was partially successful. So I have a 24 volt power supply. Uh, that's seven, seven watts, but for two motors, it should be fine. Like we're not doing any heat bad or anything. So it shouldn't really matter. Um, that's one thing. And then I only have one cable uh, for a motor. So we quickly have to crimp a second cable, I think. Let's just start with that. Let's crimp a cable. Wouldn't be a good stream without some crimping, right? So we need JST.
Uh, we need some cable. Let's see. Do I have some random cable I can use? Yeah, give me one second. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Okay, now I think we have everything. So I have some some random cables. Let me see. Yeah, okay, doesn't matter. I was just looking for like some cable. That I don't need anymore. Well, I guess we use this one. Let's just use the the black and white one. Um, doesn't have to be super long, I guess. Right. Let's just use this much. Let's just quickly crimp the ends first. And then we can like figure out what cable goes where. Always a joy, crimping JST connectors. Done almost. Oops. That was not tight enough. Should have said half done. <laughs> I guess we can connect it to, to one side already, more or less randomly. And we just need to make sure on the other side we hit the right spots. Thank you. 
Portugal. Now basically like if this would work now, I mean next stream we would need to start looking into uh, into the bat. <laughs> How do we make this move uh, vertically? That's like for me still like quite a big question mark actually. Like I have some ideas, um, but I just don't fully understand yet how the linear bearings work. So. I think we need to try out a couple of different like constellations. So I think next stream would then be just like um, trial and error, building like different variations of, of that axis. Um, my idea is to use those clamps that I have and um, basically use them to like construct like different variations of, of the frame just like temporarily and then we can like put on the bed and and see how that how it works how it behaves the initial idea was to only have two uh, vertical stuff basically to do or like not stuff but like two vertical rods that um run or like on, on which the bed runs on uh, but I'm a bit doubtful if this is sufficient for the 108 millimeter bat. So most likely we will have to go for for three instead of two. So my idea is like to have two on front and one on the back. Let's see. Okay, so let's uh, copy this. No, this is a different connector. This is not a JSC. Hey, I, it is a JST, but a different one. Totally forgot that. Yeah, this is a JST PH. It's a smaller one. That means we have to recrimp the. Hey. Just when I thought we were done. More crimping. And even worse, smaller crimping. Like um, I feel like I'm working constantly off camera. I'm really sorry for that. This should not work. Man, those uh, I hate the, those like small JC. They're so tiny. Okay, this is one. Three left to go. Ah, I pulled it off. Oh no, the cable broke. Okay, so I can't use the small crimp setting. I have to use the medium crimp setting. Yeah, the medium one is okay. It's always like the the gamble. Sometimes the medium one is like too big, and you can pull off the connector. 
and sometimes the small one is too small and you crimp off the cables basically. Okay, yeah, that seems to work. And like the common, like which one's the right one really depends on the connector and the specific cable. And the last one. It's always the last one is the most difficult. I just shot the ground. I hate crimping JC. Yes, I, I can only second that. The only thing that's worse than crimping JST is crimping uh, JSTPH, like the, you know, like the smaller ones. That's what I'm doing right now. Like this is a normal JST, right? The XT and this is the PH I have to crimp right now. Uh, that's horrible. But like, we are done. Let's just kind of like twist that somehow. Oh no, we can't twist it together. Really. Um, we first have to do one. So we have to copy this cable here, right? So looking at this, the white one we are having here is the black one. So this white one needs to be in the position of the black one, which is the outermost. Okay, the green one is one, f one empty and then goes in here. Now we can twist them together. Oh, the smaller ones, it seems impossible. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It could be worse, but it's still like, it's it's not fun. Um, The red one, black is red. Let's just double check. Uh, red is. Ha! Red is. I think I screwed up. Okay. <laughs> I lost overview of my of my uh, white and black cable. Let me quickly check. Um, the white one. Should be this. This white one should be this one here. Yeah, okay, this is correct. So this one is correct. Then the green one also must be correct. Yes. Okay, everything is in order. So the red one is white. And red goes to center. So white goes to center. Let's quickly double check before I mess up 
Um, red is white. Red is center. Okay. And then the lone survivor black. on the outside and the crimp probe perfect cool nice okay at least i could pull it out so we have one more time the pleasure of crimping jst PH. Okay, this one seems fine. Okay, we have a cable. Let's quickly uh, compare that. Just to make sure that they are in fact identical. Um, so the black one should be the outermost one. I kind of checked it already, but I'm really obsessed with like triple checking cables. Uh, green is the center one. Yeah. Um, red is the other center one. Yeah, and then the last one. Yeah, okay. Perfect. So we have two cables. Let's get rid of this like abysmal, these abysmal things here. Um, and then there's. Quickly just clean up a bit, so we have a bit more space. I finally have a small trash bin. Just for here. <laughs> um Okay, so then we have motor cables, uh, we have raspberry, um, the, uh, technically we have a power supply, it's like short and flimsy, but should be fine. For two motors, I am not very concerned. And this uh, board is like kind of half broken anyway, so this is like my my test bed. Yep. Uh, it's a bit short, so there will be a bit of a challenge, but besides that, it should be fine. 
Um, then we also need a USB cable here. Which I'm not sure where I have one. I mean, I'm certain I do have some. That's USB-C. That is almost what we need. Oh, I also need the USB. Ah, I also need the USB OTG adapter. Yeah, here we go. I need to clean up this thing. This is abysmal. <laughs> okay. Then um, some of the stepper drivers here are broken. I, I, I never can remember which one, so this is something we need to figure out. Um, but basically, we let's just go for the extruder and for that. I'm positive on those two. Uh, let's just turn this around. Then. Congratulations, you are something. I mean, we need to figure out what is what, but. Man, this is such a heck drop. Like, we have different motors, like, different cables. Um, then. Right, so unroll the entire cable here. By the way, also like short table, maybe. Um, I also have no clue what fault name this has, so we kind of have to figure that out. Okay. Then I kind of have to turn this around because I don't think I have an extension cord and this is relatively short so that will kind of like determine where stuff goes. But one second. Okay. Ah, this is not working. Look at the board. This is not supposed to blink like that. So this power supply is, is not good. Um, I do have something else. Um, give me another 30 seconds. <laughs> right back. Okay, it gets it gets really messy and crowded here. Okay, so I have an extension cord. Step one. Let me actually try to make a bit more space here. I have an extension cord. I have a really really short power cord, so that's kind of fine. Um. And then this here is actually the power supply we're going to use with this printer. I'm trying to show you as much of my chaos as possible. 
Um, that's a power supply. That's the Minivel LRS 15024. It's a 24-volt, uh, 150 watt power supply. Um, I hope this will be enough. Uh, I checked the Prusa Mini has the same 150 watts. Uh, and we're using the Prusa Mini bed, and I assume the Prusa Mini also has a 40 watt heater, and we kind of use the same motors as the Prusa Mini, so I figured if they go with that, it should be fine. So, kind of what we need to do, we have to hack drop this cable on there. And then connect that. Not because I am very untalented, we need to also check uh, what cable color is which, because I always forget that. I need it like once every five years. What is... why is this Hindustan Times regarding thread locker? This is such a weird combination, like different ways to remove lock thread locker, Hindustan Times. <laughs> um, AC wiring colors. Um, this is all US, I'm not in the US. I really wonder why they couldn't just decide on something globally. I'm not I don't want Facebook. So, neutral is blue, ground is the yellow one, and a line is, is brown. Oh. We're getting there. So, normally I would crimp those, but let's just make sure that we don't, don't touch that and don't pull on that. like this <laughs> okay so this is our AC um Let me actually just quickly grab. I'm pretty sure I had like. Okay. I always hate cutting cables for something like this. Feels like wasteful, but it is what it is. We just deal a little bit of that. At least make it the same length. And let's grab some plus.
And some minus. And then let's do the following, just because I'm a very talented person sometimes. Let's just cover that. Get some electrical tape. Okay. Then this is off. So I can I have to make a bit more tape. This needs to go over here. This needs to go here. This is off, so I plug it in. Let's quickly check that this is properly secured. Yes, this is fine. Then let's add plus minus here. Minus is on the outside. Might have. Let me trim like a bit here of the. That was messy. check to the fully inserted okay this can go so technically we would have everything set up right so we have 5 volt USB power here we can connect our clipper mainboard to the raspberry It's actually, yeah, the raspberry is on. Let's actually like open this. So let's quickly check that we can connect to the raspberry. And then technically we have everything ready to turn it on. Um, right. And then my idea is basically to just, we don't have end stops, so that, that, that can't work. Uh, but we can just use the kinematic position override of Clipper uh, and just force it into a certain position. Uh, and then we can start moving around a bit. We have to configure a couple of things, of course, but let's see. So I assume this would be raspberry.local. No, let me quickly check my router one second. Let me see. Let me see if I find that. Because I know like we use this raspberry. Test, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm very creative. I called it test printer of local. Here's our test printer. Um, technically now, if I have 
MCU unable to connect, but technically you should be able to connect already. But this is a very bad connection. Let's try firmware restart. Because uh, the MCU is powered, so it should be able to... But there's no serial, no USB. There's a video device. Hey, there's something. Um, let's see. Um, I wonder why this connector is so loose. Yeah, now it has it. Okay, so it's really just the connector is like super loose. So I don't even, I'm not even, uh, I not only have to order like a new heatset insert tool tip thingy, but also um a new otg cable let's try again yeah okay here we go let's not touch that at all <laughs> and it should be fine okay um then let's just quickly check what we have configured here because it's most likely complete chaos Um, this is the kinematics is core X, Y, of course. That's one thing. Uh, and then problems here with this thing that like the stepper drivers are a little bit fried. Uh, so at the moment we use E, uh, X is for sure fried. And I think Y as well. Z and E like extruder should be fine. Um, I'm not quite sure what we what we changed here. Um, so we need to quickly see the configuration. So SKR Mini E3. What is that? V2. Uh, Clipper config. I might have already swapped a couple of things. So let's just see, uh, stepper X should be PB13. PB13, that's correct. Um, stepper Y is PB10. Stepper Y is PB10. Stepper Z is PB0. Z is PB0 and extruder is PB3. Is PB... B3, yeah, okay. So basically what we need to do is um, let's just swap that. So stepper X becomes stepper Z and X becomes Z. Stepper Y is a bit difficult because like here we now need to copy those values over. Um, stepper Y is step enable. Then end stop. Um, we don't use end stops, uh, so this doesn't matter. Uh, the only thing then here is the TMC. Oh, and these are always the same. The UART address is what we need to change, and it's three. Uh, three. And then what we need to do is we need to copy over the stepper Y values and paste them to the extruder here. Uh, and here UART address becomes two. So basically how this works with the UART is um, it's like a chain. So basically all the steppers are on the same UART. So they all have the same UART pin and the same TX pin. Uh, and then the, the UART address is 0123. 
So you see the first stepper is uart0, then it's uart3 now, but it would be one or something. Yeah, so we have all the UART addresses and then basically the there's like a network communication basically on this UART port. Okay, let's see. So basically we just swapped the, the stepper drivers now. I'm still like dreadful of turning it on. So let's just do a quick double check and also let's um, do the check for shorts. I mean, technically it's already kind of on, so there would be short we would know most likely. There's no short, which is great. No shorts. Okay. I mean, there's really not much we, we did, so I don't think there's anything that can go wrong. Um, here it goes. I see more LDs. We have power. Um, one thing we now need to check is um, we have the force. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Because we used this like for weird stuff before, we have force move enabled here and said enable force move true. Uh, what that allows us to do is we can move it manually to a position. And now we can say um, set kinematic, kinematic position x0 y0 set you know but this would be more like here let's actually just put it to the center then we have a little bit of movement space in all different directions uh so this would be i don't know let's just say 90 y90 z0 and now you see it suddenly it's homed and um the position it says is exactly what we just gave it so now it's happy. Um, now the question is what happens if we move. Um, let's actually do a stepper bus first. Stepper bus. Stepper equals uh, stepper x, I think. It's a very loud bus, but it's bad. That's the Y. Okay, something is wrong with that stepper. This is a very nice bus. This is a very loud bus. So I think Y is working. Yeah, something is off with this stepper here. It's not even the cable we made ourselves. <laughs> um, could it be that the Z stepper... Like, I, I know a couple of stepper drivers here on this board are, are, are closed. X for sure, like it's super hot. Mm. It's even like the cable, right? Like we copied the cable, so the cable can't be the problem. Uh, let's just swap the... Let's power it off. Um, and let's just swap the two stepper cables and see what happens. Okay, that's powered on. Let's do a firmware restart. 
And then let's do another step Y bus. Yeah, now this motor is fine just by swapping them. So I'm pretty sure the stepper driver is toast. Let's do X. Yeah, that stepper driver is toast. It's exactly like swap now by just swapping the cable. Um, so let's swap the Y and Z stepper drivers. Hopefully it works. <laughs> um, so we swap Y and Z. So this goes here and this goes there. Oh, sorry. And you will be three and you are zero. Let's say restart. Oop. Now I made a mistake. Stepper Y is UART address zero. You are supposed to be three. Let's see. Wait, why, why? So stepper X is not problematic, stepper Y? Okay, stepper Y is immediate. Okay, I think now we swapped steppers in the wrong way. Um, let's quickly restore our, our things. These are all the steppers. Okay. Um, let's start over. So let's just leave it as is because like if we just do stepper bus, um, we can just, we don't have to swap stuff around actually. Ah, yeah, wait. Um, I think I now accidentally overwrote extruder. Uh, min temp is minus 300 and max temp. The problem is if there's no uh, resistance on the thermistor, like it, um, uh, you have two zeros now. Oh yeah, Jonas, you're as always correct. I need to swap the cable too. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, my brain is not computing the swapping. Um, so I'll just leave everything at step now, uh, at dock now. Um, streaming since four hours, like slowly my, my, my brain is always dying at that point. So I leave it at stock and I just use the stepper bus to Quickly test the drivers. I know the X or like what is it? The yeah, the X is definitely toast. Um so let's just see. Um let's just start with E. Oh no, how how is it called? Oh just extruder, okay. So we just passed the extruder. That works fine. Like it's a very, very, very hard bus, but it's like not the, the faulty one. Let's try Z. Yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely not working. 
like it's like a, it's not a buzz it's like a vibration like i i think the the order is out of like like the it, it feels like the step order is kind of out of sync or something um so let's do the following let's swap the cables power off wait a second let's swap the cables and try exactly those two again and if it's Jonas, you're right, as always. Uh, the, the one with the weird bus at the moment had the black cable. So let's quickly swap the cables. And if now the... This motor again has the bad thing, then it might be the cable, but I'm pretty sure initially the other side had the, had the bad steps. See, so this is on. Let's do another step or bus step. Yeah, now this one is bad. So whichever one is plugged into Z has the problem. Yeah, now this one is working. So it's not the cable and it's not the stepper. It must be the stepper driver. Um, then let's just try what happens if we use Y. If this board only has one good stepper driver left, maybe try the white driver. Yes. <laughs> maybe the board only has one good driver left. Uh, that is not out of the possible. Yeah, the Y is completely fro like completely shot. That's what I remembered. Uh, y is completely shot. Um, that doesn't respond to the UART stuff. Um... And X is is hyper shot. X is like it's it's really hot. <laughs> uh, that means basically there's only one good stepper driver left on this board. That's a shame. Um, maybe that has wrong driver settings. But what would that be? I mean, like, I, I copied the normal uh, configuration, right? Like the stock configuration from the Clipper config examples, right? This is like what I copied just now. Generic Big Two Track SKR Mini E3 V2.0. This is exactly the board I have. Mm. Uh, do you have settings on both plugged in driver? What, what do you mean by uh, same settings on both plugged and driver settings? Mm. I mean, the settings are not the same, of course, because it's Y and Z. Um... They are actually the same. They are actually the same, um, because like we're doing stepper bus, right? The kinematic stuff doesn't play into into account, like uh, acceleration, uh, st steps per revolution, or like the distance, rotation distance. Here, the rotation distance is for sure different, but the rotation distance shouldn't matter uh, for the bus. But stock has one maybe one is a different stepper motor, like different step count. Yeah, but step count is the same, right? Like if you look here, this is Y and and Z. Oh no, um, sorry. We are not talking Z, we're talking extruder. Um, micro step 16. 16. I mean, let's do the following because like the extruder is a bit different, right? Uh, let's just swap then. 
uh, the extruder with stepper X. So I just copy the, the pins over to the extruder. Uh, and then we need to check here. This is UR3. UR3. And then this becomes UR0. Okay. So now basically, uh, what we call um, extruder here is now um, X. So if we now stepper bus X, still works the same. Still works the same. And Z would be the weird one. Oh, wait, uh, nothing's plugged into Z at the moment. Let me quickly plug something in. Um, but I'm basically now like the extruder bus behaved the exact same way. Let me actually, there's two ports on Z. Uh, uh, it does make a difference, but let's just use a different port on Z. Um, nope, exactly the same. Mm, so I, I, I think that would be the different like um, configuration, right? Because even if we not call it extruder, uh, but like call it, I mean, for the fun, right? We can also swap Z and Y. Maybe it's, you know, like configuration of Z is weird. Let's just swap those. Um, this is one. This is two. Now we can bus X and Y. Aha. Uh -huh. Now it's different. It, like they're still different between each other, but now it's kind of like at least the same type of bus. Uh, by the way, like from the very aggressive buzzing, uh, we lost the screw here. That's why you should use Loctite <laughs> for the thumb nuts, uh, thumb screws. But I think we're kind of like in a good spot now, right? Because we have actually like X and Y working, I assume. Uh, we already configured the kin kinematic system to be core X, Y. So if we now set our uh, set kinematic, set kinematic position and we are homed, Nah, something is not right. Okay, so if I move 10 in X in Y, you see how it's like something is not okay. Um, let me quickly see, like if we do four step, um, there's this uh, clipper. Um, Force step, force move. Uh, 
because this basically would allow us to just like drive one stepper. Uh, do you have more steppers? Uh, but it's not the stepper issue, right? Because like by swapping the cables, uh, we moved it between the two steppers. So if it would be the stepper, it would always be the same. But if I swap the cables, it's this stepper that has the, the weird one. Um, um, so let me quick try this force move. So let's just say we do stepper x distance. I don't know what distance is. That's just random value. Aha, look at this. If I tell it to move, it moves back and forth. So something is with this stepping is not okay. And this is our self-made cable. Um, but also like this cable, there's no guarantee this cable is correct, right? Let's try the same for Y. It behaves exactly the same way. So both those cables are incorrect. I, I'm, I'm fairly certain that it, it's a cable that's a problem. Because it's like literally it's like doing this. Maybe maybe hundred. Yeah, there's something in Warren Docs. Um it's a Warren getting started. Uh, Here we go. Uh, Sepper motor check. Uh, Sepper bus. Yeah, so we did the bus. It, it, it is doing something. Um, I mean, what we could also do, um, because these are creality steppers, um, Exactly, this is what I wanted to see. But I kind of want to have it specific for the stepper. Let's just quick compare it. Um, I guess you also need the pinout of your board. Yeah, the thing is like the board is compatible with the Creality stuff because it's like SKR Mini, like it's supposed to be like a drop-in replacement for the um, Ender and other Creality printers. And the motor is also Creality printers, so they should kind of match. Um, so if we know how a Creality cable is pinned out, um, we are golden. Like technically I could... We can take part by switch wire and, and, and check, but it's not really like fun. Um, reality uh, stepper cable. Uh, 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 that's already good enough. <laughs> I have a video. Um, so it's blue. So on the side with no nose. Let's just take the part. Basically, we have to swap two cables. I, I, I'm fairly certain of that. Um, uh, 
I'm fairly certain of that. Um, I'm just looking at the uh, video here. So basically here we see both ends of the cable. Uh, and this is like a Ender 3, as it looks like. And this looks to be identical with what I have. It's blue, red, green, black. And on the other side, it's black, green, red, blue. Yeah, that's exactly what I have. Yeah, so this cable is exactly identical. Um, center swap, the center two cables. I can give it a shot. Not much to lose. Let's uh, trust Marcus. Trying to. Maybe it's easier to swap it on the other side. Let's not swap it on the <laughs> on the tiny connector. Let's swap it on the ever so slightly less tiny connector. The center two. Um, so Marcus, uh, you're telling me to swap the yeah red and green one, right? Um, Jonas, uh, so SKR has 2B, 1B, 1A, 2A. I, I can never follow with those uh, stepper things. It's like for me, it's always try and error. Let's see, let me try to. I usually get it out. But this one doesn't want to. Yeah, I think the green one is no. Hey. This one puts up a fight. Okay. <laughs> Let me try the other side. one okay no green goes over here and red goes Okay, now they should be swapped. Okay, um, let's try. Uh, so we should now see improvement on on that. Um, <laughs> this is what ChatGPT says about the pinout. Yeah, I, sh I should start asking ChatGPT more often. 
Um, here's what each part of the notation really represents. 1a and 2a are a pair of wires from B and 2b are the other pair of wires. So the A's and B's, that's why all, like in my, I never get it straight if the numbers or the letters are the pairs. So the, the A's are a pair and B are a pair. Uh, so on connector, if you measure the first two and the second two should be one coil. Let's measure if it doesn't work. Um, so we should improvement, should, okay, we have to test both because we swapped the separate driver thingies. Okay, so Y is the same, it, it wiggles back and forth. Oh, I, I, I still have 100 here, that's not helpful. Oh yeah, but it's also like the, the right one. This uh, is the one we just changed and it wiggles back and forth. Um, let's do the measure thing. <laughs> There's a high chance that you really got wrong too, yeah. Don't trust ChatGPT. What it's really good for is like repetitive tasks. Uh, like if you give it like a pattern and say like repeat this pattern like a million times, it's really good at doing that. Uh, I, I use it to generate mock data sometimes. Yeah, now these two are, are connected. Uh, but now we, what we can do is we can check uh, SKR mini e3 v2 yeah it doesn't matter like they're the same um yeah so now it's definitely wrong because now we have the 2b 1b and 1a 2a um This is so weird. Like, I never had problems like this with steppers. Oh, I think I put it back in the wrong, like, in the, in the same way. I swapped the cables now again. I think I might have accidentally put them back in the same order. Yeah. Here we go. I might have accidentally put them back in the same order. I will run the same thing again. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Success. <laughs> Judge GPT was right. Judge GPT was right. So we also quickly have to do the same here. Hey, that was like a long uh, troubleshooting. I should have figured it out a bit quicker. Uh, okay, we do one more crimp. <laughs> that. Okay. 
we do two more crimps. Okay. So my self crimped uh, ones are not not strong enough to be pulled out. Hey, we can. Okay, let's quickly crimp them again. Um, that doesn't speak for my crimping skill. I will say I got the PA09 and the crimp I ever needed to redo was the first one I ever did. <laughs> well, I, I have these. Um, they are not meant for, for what I use them for. Uh, they are for PCI uh, connectors, like... Um, but they work quite well, generally. Like, it's just like with those like tiny connectors, I think it's just not... Just a bit too much. But I have the engineer strippers and these are amazing. Like I would not want to miss them. Oh, my tweezers are so also engineer. <laughs> broken, that's broken. Oh, you've also got the, the strippers? Yeah. Like, I was, like, looking for, like, good wire strippers for, like, small cables for quite some time. And there was just nothing around, like, besides that. Like, it took me quite a while to find them, actually. Um, not a question. Like, we had black, white, black, white, right? So now we need to have white, white, black, black. Okay, let's try. Okay. Okay, so now basically what I would expect is if I do the force move, uh, we have one movement in this direction and one movement in that direction. Uh, or two of those, PA09 and a few screwdrivers from Am uh, Amazon JP, and it was cheaper with import than buying from Amazon EU. Uh, I actually got mine from like a Polish um, electronics store, which was reasonably priced, I think. Uh, like the tweezers, I, I think about two pairs were like 10-ish euros each, maybe 12, something like that. Um, and they're really nice. Like these are amazing tweezers. Like uh, all the engineer stuff I have, I'm really happy with. Okay, so we have a force move. This is, is fine, like slow, but like it was this direction. Yeah, now it moves this direction. Okay, then now we can do set kinematic position. 
I now have set kinematic positions. Now it thinks it's at 90, 90 coordinates. And now we have movement in, in one direction. This is amazing. <laughs> it's the wrong direction, but um, besides that, it's amazing. So let's just quickly check our initial uh, movement. Um, so we know that Y is, is this direction. Um, let's quickly try... Oh no, it's actually... It's, Oh, it's actually worse. Like we're moving in Z and X instead of in Y. X and Y are swapped. <laughs> uh, let's quickly swap the steppers first. I think that should fix the... Okay, let's swap the steppers. Every time I, I turn on the thing, like my camera craps out for a second. That's uh, I I don't like that. And so like they are on the same like wall plug in the end, I think, but fishy. Um, let's do set kinematic position again. So now we are home. Yeah, X and Y are swapped. Like even now, like the Y direction changed. Um Okay, so Let's see, again, um, if we move in Y positive, it moves towards me. And if we move X positive, it moves forwards. So looking at that, we are looking at um, this situation here, right? So stepper A is okay. Well, whichever is stepper A, we need to figure out. Uh, and separate B is inverted. Let's quick level check that we have this situation. So if I do plus moves towards me and X moves towards front. X front, Y towards me. Um, And it's also the same for all the different like printers here. Switchfire is different, of course. Um, so stepper Y is motor A. So whichever is on stepper Y. Um, inverted means we have to swap the cable, right? I would assume. Uh, indicates that the deer pin of the axis needs to be inverted. Okay, no cables. Um, so, what we have as stepper Y Let's just try it, there's no, no harm. Uh, before I swapped the... Where's the diagram now? Uh, before I swapped, we had... We had this situation here. Actually, right? Because like, uh, um, no. This situation. Y was moving towards me, but the X, like, X was like moving the opposite direction. Uh, so what I did actually is was correct. Uh, steppers are swapped. Uh, 
swap A and B connectors. So I swap this, and now we are in this situation, separ B and separ A. So now this is inverted. So let's just see what happens if I uh, invert. Stepper B, which is X. So X we invert. So this becomes PB4 instead of not PB4. Left should be B, I think. Um, you might be correct on that. Let's quickly see. So if I just testing. Yeah, now it's correct. Y is moving backward. And X is moving this direction. The Warren documentation was correct. <laughs> Which doesn't mean that you were not also correct with uh, B being the left one. Uh, I'm pretty sure you are correct. The distance is not correct. This is definitely more than a centimeter that it moves. This is really cool. I'm happy. <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure if it don't make sense. Like, um, I'm not sure how to calculate the rotation distance because that would be the next step, right? Uh, because now we're moving in the right direction. We're moving. We're moving in the right direction, um, but we're not moving the right distance. Uh, for sure not. So if I, I should sort of following. Where is my marker? There. Let's just do something. Um, I just make a. Um, let's just do it on, on Y. It doesn't really matter. So I just make. I just make a mark here. This is where we are. Now I just move 10 back. And let's just make a mark here. And maybe... Oh. Now I marked the part. Amazing. <laughs> I wanted this to look nice. Okay, now I'm annoyed. <laughs> Now I have black marker on my printed part. Okay, that's not gonna go away. Ah, very annoying. Okay, but let's quickly measure. How much did we move? Ah, roughly seven millimeters. So that's not not quite correct. Um, I'm pretty sure there's some mathematical magic to uh, calculate rotation distance. Um, so left B equals X now, uh, and right A equals Y. Um, I can do you a stepper, or give you a stepper bus. So stepper X. This one is X. This one is X. And the Voron docs say X is B. So B is right. And A is left. Visual, <laughs> visual end stops. Yeah, these are visual end stops. Um, that is one way to say it. <laughs> Does it count as sensorless homing? <laughs> um, so we need to check uh, how to calculate rotation distance. Um, full steps per rotation times micro steps divided by steps per millimeter. The designers of 3D printer originally calculated steps per millimeter from a rotation distance. 
If you know the septal millimeter, then it's possible to use. We don't know it because the designers don't know it. <laughs> um, or if you have an all flip configuration and you know the step distance parameter, you can use this formula. Well, I, I don't know either. Obtaining rotation distance by inspecting the hardware. Here we go. Um, it is easy to calculate rotation distance for a linear axis that uses a belt and pulley. Cool, we don't have a linear axis. First, determine the type of belt. Most printers use a 2 millimeter belt pitch. Yes, let's check. Um, then count the number of teeth on the stepper pulley. That's 20 for us. So the rotation distance would be belt pitch times number of teeth on pulley. Um, the problem is like we have a core XY, right? And I'm pretty sure this is calculated differently for core XY uh, because for us, um, the two steppers have to work together. Um, Mm. Oh, rotation distance calculator he found online, okay. No, not extruder. Yeah, it's all for extruders. Um, but should not be the same as Trident or V0? I think it should be. Um, because I use the same uh, pulley and I use the same belt. No, it's the same pulley, it's a, it's a 20 tooth. Um, shouldn't really matter which one. Um, rotation distance 40. Uh, it's going to be 40. Yeah, Ricardo, I think you're right. But it is 40. I mean, like, my, my very rudimentary measurement, right? Like, it was not far off. How about we do the following? Let, let, let's measure smarter, right? Um, let's move it to the front. Oh, now, now it thinks, thinks it's uh, <laughs> out of range. Okay, let's see. So, right now, let's just measure what we have here, right? At the moment, we are at 503 millimeters. 503. Now I've just moved 10 back. And we are at 15. So, 40 is correct. We were correct all the time. Nothing to do. <laughs> Twenty-five, like it's it's already correct. So Ricardo, uh, you are correct. It is forty, and it it was forty configured. Um, I don't know, like what can we do now? I'm, I'm slowly also wrapping up the stream, I guess, uh, because this is basically all I wanted to do to do today. Uh, also, all I could do today. Um, maybe we can do some faster moves, just like for the fun of it. 
Um, let's just see. Uh, so if we do G90 is, I, I never get straight, uh, G codes relative. You know what? Let's slice the file. Let's just throw a file on that. Um, we have to tweak it a bit, but we, we can make it work. Um, here, this is, this, is, this is some random print. Let's slice that. Um, and instead of like printing, we just export that. Export to G-code file. Uh, just throw it in downloads. One second. Oh, my Orca has this weird issue again. I had that before. I think I fixed it by restarting Orca. Okay, let's quickly first open a text editor. One second, I have to move some stuff around. Okay, we have text editor. Um, let me quickly kill Orca and open Orca. Strap on a pen and use it as a plotter. You, you could do that, right? Like you can just use it as a plotter now. Like maybe you need a bit of a, like a spring or something. And we have 1.8 degree steppers. You need to also change full steps for rotation. Yes, it's 1.8 uh, degree steppers. Uh, what would be the correct full steps for rotation? Because my understanding would be, um, like the config would also use 1.8 degree steppers. Uh, this should be fine. I think. All right, let me quickly. Here we are back in Orca. Uh, handy models. Let's do worm cube. Let's slice that. And let's export that. Export. Yeah, now it exports successfully. And now we can grab that and just drop that in here. So this, of course, won't work out of the box, right? Because there's like um, heating and stuff. We need to get rid of all of that. So basically, we only want moves. Um, That should be fine. So I just removed the start G-code with all the temperature stuff and, and things. Um, let's see. Um, let me quickly throw that in here. Okay, so um, 1.200, 200, um, printer config, what, what do we have here configured? Um, steps, micro step 16. I don't see steps before rotation configured. I assume it defaults to 200. I saw 200 here already. Full steps per rotation. 
Um, let's just quickly look at the docs. Configuration reference. Uh, 200. Um, the default is 200, so if it's not configured, it's 200, so it should be fine. We don't have it configured. Um, so we have the Warren Cube here. Uh, I would say I just move it to the center somewhat. Something. Then we do like kinematic position um, on zero because it thinks it's a v0 now basically right it's a sliced file for v0 let's print uh, but let me set the speed factor way low because now like it's it will print in v0 speed i i have to finger on the emergency stop Extruder below minimum temp. We need to fix that. Um, extruder. Um, wait, we have to uh, extrusion. Extruder. Um, min extrude temp, that's what we need. Um, and this is this one, <laughs> minus 273, because you don't have extruder or like, oh no, something like my, my laptop is a bit crapping out at the moment. I see YouTube complaining and I see my cursor doing weird stuff. Let's quickly try this. Oh, it immediately shut down. Oh, it's not powered on. No, it is powered on. Uh, do you have a link to your logo as a SVG? Uh, which logo do you refer to? The the octopus thingy? Uh, not on the fly. Uh, I would need to, to export that somewhere. Mm, okay, it's weird. Like if I now move it manually, that's fine. Let me try again. Yeah, it, it immediately craps out if I start that file. So some, something it doesn't like about that. I mean, the board is somewhat half broken, so it might just be that it's not not doing well. Um, let's also maybe just because like this is like insane stuff here. Let's just turn it way down. Um oh I know why. No, we, we, we can't we can't print. <laughs> uh the, the problem is um that it tries to use now of course the Y and X steppers. We can't do it with this board. Um because if we move it now, right? In more than like a simple way. It will try to use X and Y stepper drivers, but they are both shot. Uh, so this is not not gonna work. Um, I mean, I have more boards. That's not a problem. Actually, like another one over there. Um, but then we don't have flipper on them. 
Um, so that would be something to prepare. Um, I actually have, let me quickly show that. I think that's fun. That's kind of like was my idea, actually. It's just not ready. Give me like one second. This is my Frankenstein creation. <laughs> Uh, this was my idea to use this as electronics for this printer while we develop it. Uh, it's not ready yet, it doesn't work yet, there's stuff missing. Uh, but this is basically um, a printer without a printer. Uh, it's a hot end, it's the second hot end, which is a print pad. Uh, these are the cheap steppers we also used here. Um, and they have end stops here. So you see the little arm, this moves here and presses the end stop. And on the bottom, there's a power supply and it has hex skirts. So, hey, and there will be a screen. Um, so my idea was basically that we can, once this is ready, just put this here and just plug the steppers in and then we can move this. And like, this is like fully ready uh, because also like when we work on the bed and everything, like this won't be ready. Um, but I think then the, the, the next step would be to be honest, like we need to set up a proper board. Um, because this is, like this is my uh, demo board. Like whenever I want to do something where potentially something goes wrong, I try to use this board. Um, but then there's a decision to be made. Maybe uh, Jonas, Ricardo, whoever's here, let, let's do a quick vote. So the initial idea was to use this um, Reality mainboard. This is the mainboard from Ender 3 Pro. Um, 8 bit, super shit, horrible. They are cheap. Um, th this was why I wanted to use this one because this fit in the 100 euro price point. Uh, this is the one option. Um, but I also have a brand spanking new with Ducky, with rubber Ducky. Um, FKR Mini Pico, which is a very nice board. Um, so, what do you guys uh, vote for? Uh, which main board should go in here? Should we stick with the cheap one or do we have a nice uh, sensorless homing experience? Because then I will prepare the board we pick um, for the next stream to be ready with Clipper. Um, the connectors and everything are all the same between them. Uh, so we can really like plug and play, swap them out. Um, they even have the same mounting pattern actually, like these two at least. <laughs> so um, let me know what your uh, favorite is. Um, and then I would say, let's, let's wrap it up here. Uh, this is a huge success. Um, Hi there, Brandon. What are the benefits of using the Pico over the 8-bit board? Um, it's nicer. That's that's the only thing. Um, the main benefit is that the for, for Clipper, the, the 8 and 32-bit doesn't make a big difference, to be honest. Um, the benefit is that this one has better stepper drivers. Um, this one has the uh, TMC2209 stepper drivers, um, where as this one has the A9880 or something like that. Uh, so basically these are way better drivers. So they have stealth drop, they have sensorless homing, um, just nicer. Uh, overall, it's just like a higher quality board, I would say. A uh, nice benefit, by the way. Mm. One second. Oh. Nice benefit of this board, um, if you have a raspberry, which we will have, right? Um, there will be a raspberry. Uh, no, answer top could make some things nicer. Yeah, definitely. Um, especially like, not sure, like if you guys watched the uh, stream where I designed the tool hat on stream and like uh, adding this end stop, finding a spot for this end stop was such a pain. <laughs> this thing really was a pain. 
Uh, but now like I kind of have everything designed for end stops and I think I would like at least for the first iteration keep them just to know that I can add end stops. Um, but for this board the benefit would be um, the mounting holes are Raspberry Pi size. So you can actually add a Raspberry Pi as a piggyback on top. Um, this is actually very nice. Uh, this is not like Pi Zero. But if you have a full sized Pi, like those mounting holes directly aligned. So you just need like um, one or two centimeter spacers and you just mount them together. And then it comes with this cable. This is like my favorite printer main board of all time, basically. Uh, it comes with this cable plugs in here at the end and then basically you plug it on top of the Raspberry on the GPIO headers. It basically connects to the first five GPIO headers um, and this will power the Raspberry Pi. So you have perfect, stable, clean 5 volt power from that. Um, that's the three cable and then you have RX and TX uh, and then basically the Raspberry and the SKR Pico can communicate over UART so you don't have a USB cable. Um, so this is really like plug and play, more or less. And you have the Raspberry and the Pico in one, one thing. Uh, and this is a very cheap board actually. Uh, I bought this one um, on sale for 25 euros. Um, so it's, I think, the cheapest printer main board with high quality stuff you can get. Um, but now let's talk about it. I think... At least for the first iteration, let's let's use this one uh, because it's not the initial idea. And for this one, I have a different project. I think. Um, let, let, let's take with this. I, I, I now I offered you the choice, and now I take the choice away. Now I feel bad. <laughs> uh, but then I tried to flash clipper on this, onto that. Potentially, I already did that. Um, potentially, I already did that. Um, and then this one is for our next project. Okay, that's it. Uh, does the 8-bit board have any effect on speed? Not really, no. Um, that's a big, big selling point of Clipper, right? Um, if you use Marlin, yes. On Marlin, um, the 32-bit board makes a huge difference in speed and also features. Um, so the 8-bit board is, I mean, how, where the 8-bit stuff comes from, right? Um, this is kind of like an Arduino, technically. This is an Arduino. Um, when those boards were um, kind of like new, um, you used the Arduino IDE to flash Marlin onto those. Um, That's why they are 8-bit. It's just like it was like the most basic boards available. Um, by now the 8-bit chips are actually more expensive than the 32-bit chips uh, because they're just like mass produced and this is like kind of like an odd thing out. Um, on Marlin, um, the 8-bit board, because uh, on Marlin you only have this as the printer, right? This is the printer main board, this controls everything. The entire operating, the, operate, the entire firmware has to fit on, on, on that 8-bit board. So on Marlin you really have to choose on 8-bit which features do you want to enable? Uh, so for example, when I still use this board, I disabled the SD card slot to enable other features because like disabling the SD card slot uh, brought you program memory. And then also the 8-bit is of course like a big performance issue in a certain sense that the board cannot compute the movements fast enough. Um, so basically the printer speed is limited by how fast can the board compute stuff. Um, things like pressure advance or like input shaping are not to think of basically. It's like auto, auto scope. The 32-bit boards have enough power to do that on chip. Uh, so if you look at, for example, uh, the Prusa Mark IV um, comes with something like this, right? It doesn't have a clipper setup. Um, on clipper, the big benefit is that all the computation is moved off this, this board. It's done on the Raspberry. So on a clipper, basically, um, the board itself has very little impact. The main impact actually are the driver chips, um, where this one has worse ones, but yeah. I will go with this. Um, the only challenge is I need to check if I can flash clipper on it without like a big, big hassle. Um, if that works, let's go with this. If I need more than an hour to flash clipper on that, we use that one. Cool. 
Wait, I want to move it one more time. Just just for the fun. <laughs> yeah, and something's off with my laptop. Like everything is super, super laggy. So See, now, now I'm happy. It moves. <laughs> With that being said, uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, this was like a really cool stream. Lots of progress. Like I I'm really happy that A, like all the work we did uh, was like redesigning the parts uh, and like reprinting the entire thing, right? Like all of those are new parts. Uh, everything worked. We got super lucky with having this extra millimeter here. Like this is like super tight that the bells rub on each other, but it's like just just enough clearance. Um, yeah, it's like comes together. Like this was, I think it's a milestone from here on out. I think it's getting easier. I hope. <laughs> so last challenge is basically making the bat move. Uh, if we get a nice movement on the bat, we are basically safe. And it turns out like I, I, I like the design, like it looks looks nice. So I'm happy. Cool. Thanks for tuning in. Um, enjoy your Easter holidays, if that's a thing for you. And see you next week. Bye. <laughs>